along. It's going to be a tough year, um, no doubt about that, but we're trying to share as much information as we possibly can. Um, my name's Jason Mathers. Uh, I'm the area manager for the South East. I also have online uh, Emma Gallagher, um, who is the cricket manager for the South East, and we also have um, Alistair Burge as well. We'll put our contacts um, with the email um, that we send around to everyone that attends today um, with the slides and all the information. So um, thanks for joining us today. Just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you could please remain on mute during, during the uh, presentation. Um, please keep your video off. It just helps with um, internet connection. And um, please use the chat function in the side. Um, we've already had some great uh, participation there already. So please, it's a two-way conversation. We know there's some fantastic um, knowledge out there um, in regards to um, people running programs and, and great skills that we'd love you to share with us as well. So uh, put your comments and questions in the side. You can also raise your hand virtually um, with your raise the hand uh, button. Um, and also um, the session is being recorded. Um, just a quick acknowledgement of country before I hand over to the two presenters. Um, Australian Cricket acknowledges Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians past and present and recognise the distinctive rights that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders Australians hold as the original peoples of this land. Um, do you want me to hand over to you now, uh, Owen and Jake? That'd be great. Thanks. Thanks, Jason. Thanks very much for that. All right, Cricket Blasters. My name's Jake. I love cricket and I love the Melbourne Stars. I know you can, you're excited. You can see all Jake, the activities Jakey, around us. Jakey, Jakey, Jakey. Yeah. What, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm just running a, a Cricket Blast training session, mate. That's, that's what I'm Jake, doing. Jakey, this is a training session for coordinators, not, not participants. Jakey, we, we, in this one, we're, we're covering off on things like the, the summary of the Woolworths Cricket Blast video that you and I created. Um, things like how to run your centre in a COVID-safe environment, how to promote your club to schools and, and other promotional material that we have available, Jakey. That makes sense. I got them muddled up. But how come all these things over the side and the, and the chat function are just a thing that the kid would write? <laughs> Jakey, we're trying, to, we're trying to show that, you know, cricket cricket is all about creating memories, which is what we do in Cricket Blast. It's all about creating memories for young kids. That's my bad. That's my bad. Sorry about that. All right. No worries. Well, how about you introduce yourself and I'll catch up. I'll get myself sorted. Yeah, yeah that's a great idea. Right. Well, while, while Jake is just composing himself over there, I will introduce myself. My name is Owen Hewlett uh, and I am the Association and Club Participation Specialist at Craig Victoria. Uh, I've been in this role, specifically this role, for uh, the last three months and in a role uh, prior to that, very, very similar to, to this one um, for a year. So, so about sort of... Um, what is it? About sixteen months all up uh, now. So uh, yeah, have been have been working in that in that role, and then prior to that, had some experience for, for about three years in working in childcare. So doing uh, out of hours care um, for for primary school aged children. So all up about four to five years of experience in uh, not just running you know cricket and sports programs, but um, recreation programs for for primary school aged children. My fingers are crossed that, that Jake has been able to compose himself after that start, and uh, and I might hand it over to him to introduce himself now. Thanks very much. I'm all over it now, Owen. Thank you. Yes, so my name is Jake DeRouge. I'm the Cricket Officer for the North and West Country. A little bit about my background. I've uh, I worked at a primary school prior to this role for around about 10 years, very similar to, um, to Owen. Um, I was studying education, uh, and I worked at an out-of-school hours care program. I was a coordinator there. I also worked as an integration aide, so I, I sat with children with an intellectual disability and helped them through their day. Um, and I've also worked sort of casually with Cricket Victoria. I've done a various, uh, sorry, various different things as a as a YPL coach for um, started off with the girls and then moved into some boys um, under sixteen age group. And then I've um, I've also just worked casually for Cricket Victoria in schools before jumping into this role. So that's 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 plenty on me. I'll I'll hand back to Owen now to go through. Uh, the video summary. Fantastic. So we, we've given you a, a rough overview of the agenda. Um, the, the first item that we wanted to cover was a coordinator training video that, that Jake and I have created. So unfortunately, you will have to hear our voices again on that one. 
Um, in, in that video, it's essentially a real, uh, it, it covers the nuts and bolts of, of, of what, it, what it requires from you to be a, a Cricket Blast coordinator. So we've got the dot points there of um, things like the Cricket Blast app, which is a really great supporting tool for you to utilise uh, in the running of your program. The, uh, the, the coordinator role uh, and the basics you need to be across. We cover things such as centre equipment and how to purchase that through the online shop. And then we also uh, touch on some supporting resources that are available to you uh, online, uh, again, to help support you through, through your program. So as you can see there, we've got the link below that, um, that, that takes you to where the video is. And also in the email that you received when, when you registered for this program, you would have received the link for that as well. Um, so yeah, when, whenever you get a spare 20, 20 to 25 minutes, jump on and, and have a look at that video because there's some hopefully some really useful tips uh, in, in running a Cricket Blast program. I will now hand all it back to Jake, who is going to talk about the Australian Junior Cricket Pathway uh, and, and how Cricket Blast fits into that. Fantastic. Thank you, Owen. Uh, while I'm talking about the, the, uh, the Girls and Boys Junior Pathway, I'd love to fire up the chat again, if we can, please. Uh, my question is, um, I'd just like us to. I'd like to know how um, how much experience you've had with the Cricket Blast program. So if you could just put the number of years that you've coordinated a program. So if this is your fifth year coordinating a Cricket Blast program, you put five. And if you're if this is you're coming up to your first year, put zero. Um, and we'll just we'll, we'll get a bit of a range on on how on how much experience we've got there on the call, as Jason alluded to earlier on. So as I move through, this is a this is a really good infographic if you haven't seen this one before i'm sure many of you would have seen it uh, we think it's a really good way of a really good visual representation of where cricket blast fits into our our junior formats so as you can see those two pillars over to the left there are cricket blast um, so starting with junior blasters over to the far left there you can see the duration's just one hour it's about getting the kids in and then out again it's just it's all about fun non-stop fun uh, focusing on fun and game-based activities. Some skills that a junior blaster might learn are uh, uh, holding a bat with two hands and striking a ball. Some really basic eye tracking and ball movement, fundamental catching skills, um, as well as starting to get that sort of concept of bowling with a straight arm. And we can see so we move into the master blasters pillar there, which is that next one, the, the pink one. We can see that's where, our, that's where our master blasters start to learn the game. So they're playing an actual game with their friends um, they've got a chance to smash some boundaries and take some wickets and get a concept of what it's like to play a game of cricket. And I just wanted to call out too that that qualifying skill at the bottom there is bowling uh, with a straight arm over 14 metres in a game of Master Blasters. Perfect. All right. So I will hand back to Owen now. No, no sorry. I'm going to keep going. All good. We, I'll, I'll just let you know. We've got some uh, we've got some great um, some real differences in the year. So we've got a lot of zeros, which, as Emma said, there is it is exciting, and it's and it's probably I think someone mentioned there probably scary as well, um, which absolutely we can agree with that. Um, and we've also got a couple that have said 15 plus, so a real range of experience here, um, which is yeah definitely very exciting. Awesome. Okay. Yep. That's really good to know. And yep, as I said, we definitely want to hear from those. Um, those 15 year plus people um, as they're going to have some great ideas um, as to going into what's probably going to be a bit of an unusual year as, as what Jason mentioned earlier on. So that's that first part of, uh, of the webinar just sort of done now. We're going to cut the next two uh, the next part into two sections. So we're going to we're going to talk about this return to blast checklist now. Um, so hopefully you can get some tips and tricks about sort of running the running your session safely in a COVID environment because it's uh, there's, there's a fair bit in the, in the checklist. So this is the time to, to really break it down and go through each uh, piece by piece rather. And then obviously have a chance for some group discussion later and, and really get some suggestions on some of the best practice out there and some really good tips to help us uh, to, to run the program. All right, so I'll pass on to you now, Owen, to go through some sharing of equipment. Fantastic. Um, I, I will just touch on before we get into the specifics of the checklist. Um, a lot of the information that we're going to share right now, uh, while it's up to date at the moment, as you'd be well aware with, with, with COVID and, and the situation that we're in, these restrictions that are in place are, are evolving and they're always changing. Um, so we'll continue to provide you with the most up to date information 
as it comes to hand. Uh, but the information that we share here right now is the most up to date. Um, so yeah, just, just keeping that in mind. Uh, the first part of the checklist that we will touch on is the sharing of equipment, which is obviously a pretty hot topic um, at the moment. And, and look, it's not just Cricket Blast, it's, it's junior cricket and senior cricket um, and, and what, what we're going to be able to do in that space. So as of right now, and the benefit that we have being in a Cricket Blast program is when a junior blaster signs up for the first year in their participant pack, they do receive a cricket bat. Um, so for those first year junior blast participants, and hopefully if they're second year junior blast participants or that they've transitioned uh, into master blast, um, they've kept their bat with them. So we will be encouraging uh, all participants to bring their own cricket bat to their sessions. In the, in the participant pack as well, they will receive a sticker that they can put on their bat um, with their name on it. So that's a really useful way, obviously, when we're talking about not, not wanting to share equipment. Um, the kids come with their, with their bat and their, and their name on the sticker, as, as Jake has, uh, has shown there in his, in his screen below. Um, really easy way to identify whose is whose. So that's something that we'll strongly be encouraging um, and, and also something that you can, you can communicate through the app. Um, while we understand that, you know, with, with the participant pack, um, they do receive a bat, we completely understand that not all participants are going to bring, bring their bat to the sessions. They may forget or, or it might have, they might have lost it for whatever reason. That is where the club equipment that you have um, will come in really handy. Um, so uh, you, you noise there. Um, so the, the club should have enough equipment or, or an, enough bats to cover off on those kids that, that don't bring their own. The one thing that we do ask though, if that does happen, is when you give your child um, or give, give a child a, a club bat, um, that it remains that child's for the duration of the session and it's, and it's cleaned or sanitised prior to and, and at the end of that session. In, the, in regards to other equipment, so setting up cones and ropes and, and all the other stuff that you may need to prepare prior to a session. I know previously in, you know, when it's business as usual, it's great to get the kids involved with this and get them to help up, uh, help, sorry, uh, setting up the program and then, and then packing up as well. Just in this current situation, we are going to ask that we keep that to a minimum and that the coordinator um, uh, uh, does that on their own um, and, and leaves the kids out of it, just to ensure that there isn't uh, plenty of equipment being touched by different people. Um, so yeah, just, just a couple of important points there. I will uh, touch it, I'll, I'll, I'll handle it back over to Jakey now, who's going to um, firstly, talk about an idea that he has in regards to the sharing of equipment, and then he'll get into the social distancing and, and the no contact uh, restrictions. Yeah, thanks very much, Arnie. I just wanted to touch on there. We, I understand it's it's going to be really tricky because we're, we're talking about five and six year olds here. We're telling them just to, they're going to magically just keep hold of all their own equipment and they're not just going to drop it in with the, with the pack. But the reality is they're just going to be excited to get there. We've got to understand as well, it might be the first time they've seen some of their friends in a long time. So especially in this setting, they're, they're going to be really hyped up and excited, which is a good thing. But um, just a suggestion not to contradict ourselves at the bottom there by saying keep the touching of the cones just to the coordinator. But if, you're, if your centre has enough cones just to assign one cone to a particular participant, and you could get their name on it, something like that I've just sort of done here. That means that could be sort of their area um, off to the side of the blast, um, around, around your sort of blast zone or wherever your welcome assembly is. You can space out the cones um, and then you can also, you, that can be also, that can be their little base for the, uh, for the session. They can keep their drink bottle there. As you say, their bats that they've brought along, their, their ball that, they, um, that they're going to bring with them as well. And that might be just something you bring up in the welcome assembly as a bit of a strategy to help um, the, just the mixing up of equipment. So hopefully you can help mitigate that one by just giving them their own little area. All right, I'll move on to uh, non-contact and physical distancing. I'm going to, um, again, if we can fire up the chat here, I'd love to hear from some of those people. For, well, we'd love to hear from anyone really that might have any suggestions on this. Um, particularly with what I mentioned before about, we're talking about kids that are, that are five and six years old and 
um, that it, this is going to be a tricky thing for them to comprehend. But if anyone's got any sort of methods, I'm going to go through some at the moment. But anything that they've seen work, maybe in a childcare setting or or even teachers when they've um, that, that that might not have been remote learning and that sort of thing, um, anything that's going to work that might be helpful, we'd love to hear some suggestions in just a moment in the chat box. So this is this is nothing new to what's been going on. Cricket blast is no exception. Um, there's going to be no contact between the blasters and the coaches and the volunteers. Um, I understand that's going to be it's going to be pretty tricky between the blasters. Um, and we've got obviously all of our resources. Some of the games that are in there are going to have um, are going to have are going to be games where there is sort of contact and and, and change between things. We've just got to keep that to an to an absolute minimum, um, and we're trying to find those activities that they can they can just use their own equipment from. So, for example, hurricane hands would be a really good one for a, for a junior blaster setting. Um, that's it. They're only just touching the ball that they've got, and they're competing against themselves when they're doing those little warm up activities. So, so that's a little bit of an example. Um, and just as, it, as as we mentioned at the bottom there, um, that that social distancing for 1.5 meters. So, a suggestion of how to do this when we're talking about young kids might be just playing a game with them. Keep it really positive. So some octopus arms. So you might want to have um, you might want to have a miss uh, a whistle, sorry, or some sort of signal that you've got. You might call something out. You might want to call a big bash team out, and the kids might want to do their octopus arms. So they can go back and they can wave their arms around. And hopefully, if they're not hitting any arms, make it a real positive thing. That means they're social distancing. So if you see some kids that are too close to each other, you might want to say, oh, righto, we might get these octopus arms going. Wave the arms around, and that might be a bit of a strategy to try and um, to try and mitigate that that uh, that contact as well. So air high fives are another one. Just practice a few of those in your welcome assembly. Lots of thumbs up, trying to minimise that that um, that contact there. So so certainly not rocket science, but it's going to be a tricky thing. Oh, and how are we going in the chat box there? Did we get any suggestions at all? Some good suggestions. Uh, what what did we have? We had one. Uh, I'm just looking at it now. There was one. Obviously, hand sanitizer before entering the oval. So that's something that we'll cover off on the on the hygiene point, um, which we will cover off later on in the checklist. I'm just scrolling to see. There was a good suggestion somewhere. Can we get hold of extra bat stickers um, that we could use? I'm sure we can find some way that we can get that, or even if 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 your club, who was that, Christy, um, was to purchase some some labels that you can have at the start of the session, um, we could absolutely organise that. Uh, that's that's about it by the looks of it. Jake, uh, some some good suggestions come through there. That's it. We'll get onto a couple of those things later on. I think we're over to you. Absolutely. So. While we've touched on those first two points regarding uh, equipment and, and the social distancing, a really good way to get those points across um, at the start of the program is to introduce a bit of a welcome briefing or assembly, which majority of centres would do, but for those coordinators that are just starting out, um, this, is, this is something that, that will be really beneficial, especially for this season. So at the very start of the program, before you get into your activities, um, have the kids set out and, and important to set them out into their groups that they're going to be in um, for the program. And then a, a good opportunity to maybe get one or two kids out to, to show them an example of physical distancing. So showing them an example of the 1.5 metres that they need to keep. Um, Jake's example before about the octopus arms, get them out there and a, a couple of kids out there and practising their octopus arms. Um, so they can see what it's like as opposed to um, just relaying all the information on. Uh, it also in, important, uh, the welcome briefing for, for any, any parents that are going to help volunteer at the session as well, um, so they know what the, what the rules are um, for the program. That's about it for the for the briefing. I'll, uh, I'll give it back to you now, Jakey, for uh, the hygiene. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Owen. Uh, this one is this is something that we're trying to get a little bit more information on about how how cleaning the equipment will work after each session. But this time we're just going to call it out as we see it. So our um, our conditions here are just to uh, to disinfect all equipment after the after the session. I know that's going to be a be a real burden on the coordinator and, and the helpers that are that are there. But we're just going to need to find a way. It's just what we've been the cards that we've been dealt at the moment. Um, 
So it's just making sure that we're wiping down all of that. Um, it's probably worth it's probably worth calling out too that our that our cricket club are going to have a, a, a COVID plan that they're going to have to adopt and in, in, endorse. And there's a lot more information about sort of the sharing of equipment and sort of in the um, the resources and um, and also and just the, the cleaning supplies that we're going to have to use to clean the equipment. Um, and the next thing I'll call, call out there as well is just the no crossover of equipment. So if we're going to have, um, if we if our blast centre is going to have two different groups, um, one on each side of the oval, again, our, the club's COVID plan will explain where your, where your groups can be. Um, but if you've got two groups of 10 on, on either side of the oval, um, it's just about making sure that we're not crossing over the equipment and not sharing that equipment there, um, just want no crossover. In the exact same way too, if we have to set it up so we have we have a separate blast group coming after the first one, we leave ample time um, to make sure that we can clean and disinfect the equipment before we use it again. Um, that's just one thing to, uh, to to consider as well. All right, I'll throw it back to Armin. He's going to go through some um, some safe entry and exit points for the blasters. Yep, for sure. As Jake touched on just before there regarding your club's COVID plan, um, so this is where, where where things like this will come into play. Your your club in, in, within their plan should have details on on where parents when, when they're dropping off their kids to participate need to enter from and where they need to exit from um, for, for the program. So again, the Cricket Blast app a great way to notify your parents um, of where they need to go prior to the prior to the program starting as well understanding that that many ovals and many clubs have have different uh, entry points which which you normally you'd be able to use in this instance it's more likely going to be a one one entry point one exit point just to keep it all um, all close in so um, yeah look out for your club's COVID plan and link up with your, your club president or, or a committee member to, to be across that and work with them on that uh, a, a great a great thing as well is with the cones that you have creating little safe zones for your blasters um, so letting them know in your in your welcome briefing as well where it's safe to stand um, and, and sort of where is out of bounds or where, where, where you know you can't go on the ground um, yeah so some great things to do there back to you Jakey for the last point on the checklist yep thank you the last one is our is our program kept capacity. I just want to, I don't, hope we don't sound like we're banging on here, but I just, I really want to make this clear that, um, as Owen alluded to earlier, that this is, this is what, this is the information as of right now. This is, this could change. We've seen it change many times over the, over the past few months. This is an evolving beast and, um, and in our situation in, in a matter of weeks or, or months time could be very different. So, th so this could change and, and communication is key. We're going to get out the latest advice to you um, as, as it comes, as soon as we have it, we really want to pass it on as quickly as we possibly can. But at the moment, these are the um, these are the parameters we're dealing with. So this is the advice from the Department of Health and Human Services. And Cricket Victoria have also been spe um, speaking with Sport and Rec Victoria to try and to try and come up with this plan um, and and obviously create this checklist that we're talking about now. So at the moment, we're currently we're going to be able to have a maximum of of two groups of ten on an oval. Um, if you've got cricket nets and you're able to utilise them, it's not going to be easy with your with your with the master blaster and and, um, and and junior blaster program. But that's what we've got at the moment. So we've got two groups of ten. This is probably particular with a junior blaster program on either side of the oval. So very very much spaced out. Um, and we're seeking some further advice on this one. But with a master blaster, you you might be doing your math there, and you might be thinking, okay, we've got a team of six playing against a team of six. We've got twelve. How does that work? We're okay to have, we're okay to have that number, the, the number of people that it's going to take to get a game working. Because you might be thinking about senior cricket, we're going to have 11 fielders out there and two batters. All of a sudden, we, we're going well over 10. But it's just about, it's, it's about giving the right amount of people for a game. So when it's master blasters, we're talking about the the right amount of people just to get the game functioning on either side of the oval is okay there too. But for junior blasters, we're looking at groups of 10. And as I mentioned earlier, I can completely understand that. I'll be talking to. I'm, I'm sure there'll be people um, that are that are viewing this tonight that are thinking well, we've got 50 or 60 people, uh, junior blasters that come to our uh, come to our program. That's going to be really tricky. Um, and 
it might be setting up different times um, throughout the day, which is going to be a, a large burden and something that the club's going, to, your cricket club's going to have to talk about, and that we can try and support with some suggestions on too. But as I mentioned at the start, this is this is as we're running right now. So delaying that sort of start time as late as we can sort of have it um, is, go, is going to assist with that, and and hopefully the restrictions will uh, will, will be easing by then. I'll throw back to you, Alan, for some supporting documents, but probably worth um, checking that we've got any questions too. You, we, we did, but you did just answer it. So I think we, we had Andrew there uh, state, and, and and again, this is going to be something that occurs uh, for a lot of you regarding uh, that our program normally has upward of 60 kids with only two ovals. How, how are we going to manage this? So absolutely. Um, and, and as Jake said, I think being able to delay that, that start time uh, for, for as long as possible, so something like a late November, uh, I think I think the, the advice that we're giving out is a 21st of November onward start date for, for to, to get in four weeks pre-Christmas. Um, but, but for Metro clubs, uh, it, it might be looking at a, a post-Christmas start date just to get a bit more certainty that we're going to be able to start with, with, with some larger groups. Um, but again, it, you might need to do um, two different programs on different days and split up split up the groups, which again we understand is not ideal. Um, but but we've got to we've got to find some workarounds on this. So um, absolutely, yeah, understand understand the the challenges that we're going to face there. Um, so so that pretty much covers off the the return to blast checklist. Uh, and what we'll just touch on now is some supporting documentation and where to find this stuff. So, as you can see there, we've got the link that, that will take you to the Cricket Blast checklist. Um, so you can uh, you can download it for your club or, or print it for your club, which is which is probably something that's already being done if if a Cricket Blast program is going to be operated, you know, in the near future. Uh, but just make sure that that's something that your your club is looking into. Um, and then also to, to view further information regarding return to play guidelines, we've got a link there that takes you to, to our community cricket site where all of that information is kept. And then the last point there regarding supporting documentation is again your club COVID plan, um, which your club will be adopting and endorsing. Um, so definitely make sure that you, you have a copy of that or that's been sent to you, um, so you're right across that. The, the oh, and the last point, and I did see, I can't remember who it was, but someone in in the chat sent the sent the link uh, regarding this infection prevention and control training. So so well done to whoever that was. Thank you on the ball there. Um, but this link here is a it's a it's a short thirty minute course um, that that all sort of program coordinated. We we are uh, strongly recommending you complete prior to your program starting. Um, I know I did this back when um, junior footy was pot potentially getting up for my junior footy side. Very simple, um, gives you some great information um, and, and something something definitely there, there to utilise. Um, so that, that essentially uh, covers off on, on the first half of the webinar there, uh, covering off on, on, I suppose, how to return to play in a, in a COVID safe environment. We understand there was a lot of information there um, and some really tricky workarounds, uh, especially for, for programs that are you know quite large and, and have a lot of participants. But again, we'll continue to provide you with the most up-to-date information we can, and we'll continue to work with you on, on coming up with solutions um, as, as they come to hand. Uh, just going to look. I think the questions are being answered by Emma there in the chat box. So yeah, there's, we might, there's just, might just on. one from um, just one from Louisa actually was yep. uh, just around uh, how many groups could run at the same time. So if groups are fenced off and maintaining set group size and appropriate social distancing measures. Yep, absolutely. Great question, Louisa. So at the moment, if you are on one oval. The, the current guidelines state that you can have two groups of 10 participants. Um, so essentially halving the oval and have one group of 10 on one half and the other group of 10 on the other. Um, we are, as we said, we are working with, with um, uh, Sport and Rec Victoria and the Department of Health and Human Services on, on potentially getting that increase because we understand that 
um, with a lot of our Cricket Blast programs, that's going to create uh, um, some some real issues. Um, but yeah, as it stands, for, for one oval, it's two groups of 10. And we've uh, we've just got some um, yeah, some chat coming through from Peter from Wodonga Cricket Club, who they're going to be returning to cricket training tomorrow. So he's sort of uh, advertised to keep a look out on their socials. Um, could be really interesting and... And um, yeah, good luck, good luck, Peter, for the for the return to cricket training tomorrow, mate. Great. Absolutely, all the best. And I see that Peter said, jump on our Facebook page. Oh, I just lost that. Jump on our Facebook page to see information we are pushing out at the moment. So I'm not sure what club Peter it says Wodonga. I can't. Is it Wodonga Cricket Club? Um, Peter Wilcox. So, yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm not really sure. Peter Wodonga. But it might be something, guys, if you um, – there might be some good information coming out from Peter there. So, definitely. Thanks a lot for that, Peter. Thanks for sharing. Um, is this me, Jakey, or is it you? Yeah, yep, you're going to go through this. Oh, this is me. Fantastic. You've got me again, guys. Um, righto. So, the second half of the webinar now, we are going to get into – uh, school to club transition. So specifically talking about um, how to create really strong connections with the schools in your area, um, and then and then also promotion. How to how to promote your club and, and marketing material and support that's available. So the top points there that we're going to cover off on um, what are the what are the school programs that CV are running um, for you to engage with. The CV school strategy. Um, so what are we what are we now focusing on? How do we target schools in your area? Um, so what data do we use and things like that? And then the last point there is marketing and promotion. So what resources do we have available for, for clubs to utilize uh, in this space? Perfect, all right, just getting to the halfway point too. Oh, we're going well, I think, cruising along for time. Right on. All right, so uh, this, just um, as, a, as, as you can see, the school programs that are up there, um, that first one with us, our school ambassador program. I'm just going off the odds here. I, I, I don't know if there's going to be, but there are. If there's any school ambassadors online, we'd love just to, for you to put put your hand up in the um, in the in the comments box. Just just, just let us know in the uh, in the chat function there, um, as you might be able to to comment on some of these things that, that you're running in the school as I go through them too. So these are some of the school programs that we've got running at the moment. This is probably more in a um, in a non sort of COVID environment too. Um, our, our, our school cups are we're, we're working through for term four and, and now looking like uh, they're going to be uh, term one and term two. But our school cups there you may have seen or heard of before. They're great sort of master blaster days. We've got lots of grounds um, on one oval. Um, and our Cricket Blast Health and PE program too, that's a four week program uh, that we run in schools. Uh, that um, kids can really get their cricket fix in their, in their PE class. We've got PE teachers there. We're, we're, we're arming PE teachers or, or any teacher at the school or an am ambassador at the school with plenty of resources that links to their uh, links to the to the curriculum, um, and they're able to put it into their program and planning for the kids, which is awesome. Uh, sporting schools is a very similar program where there's, it's government funded for some equipment and resources, which is great. The one I really want to call out before I um, before I bang on too long is, is mascot challenge. So that's um, that's that's happening at the moment. So even in a remote learning environment, we've had some teachers around the state already take it on. We've had some really good uptake of our mascot challenge. That's really basic activity. So the kids are getting a stress ball. They're doing little things like throwing the ball up and trying to catch it, throwing it up and catching it in the other hand, um, and then the kids are they, they can mark off on a on a classroom sheet. And they as they progress through that's a really good one to try and hook in with in a in a normal environment i understand we're not going to be able to get into schools in term four but that's a great one to try and get along with when you've got your cricket blast hat on and you're trying to um you're trying to get on some blasters so that's one to think to think about linking into moving on to our school strategy now um a, a bit of a and i just want to sort of go through and call out how our school strategy has changed We've really gone with a club first approach, uh, and that's what our that's what our school strategy has evolved into. We ordinarily and historically we've been trying to get the, the biggest number we possibly can in, in school participation, um, but our focus now is is really on that school to club transition number. So we're trying to figure out a way to to get that rather than just get lots of kids getting their cricket fix in school. That, that's important and that's great, but our but our focus has shifted towards that school to club transition number. 
um, and working with clubs to build a plan together. Um, as your local community cricket staff and your club will have the same objective of, of attracting new, new participants, as well as, of course, retaining participants that you've got at your club. Uh, cricket Victoria has access to, to what school programs are running um, to support the strategy that your club will have in place working within a school. So that we can we can try and uh, we can try and work together and, um, and 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 build on the plan that you've already got running. Um, and sec and just lastly on that sort of point too, if you've got any teachers that are that are connected to the club, they'd be a, they'd be a great first point of call um, to see what sort of options you have promoting your club in their school as well. Oh, and I'll throw it to you for the last two. I'm getting sick of my voice. <laughs> Absolutely. I would just like to call out, I think it was Jan there um, saying that the um, kids are loving the Mascots Challenge. I think it was Jan. Um, so great to hear that, that that's getting out there and, and being used. Awesome stuff. Awesome. Um, right, the couple of points that I'll, I'll cover off on here. So how do we utilise our, our school participation data? So essentially when, when um, parents register their child, we, we get a heap of data. And, and I suppose what, what we can do with that is we can use it to analyze um, our marketing and promotion campaigns and, and how successful they've been. Uh, and then also we, we can indirectly measure the success of, of our school programs. So, and I will provide an example on the next slide, but we can see that there might have been an increase in, in school to club transition um, at, at particular schools. And we can then go and look at, at what, what we did differently at that school in terms of what, what different programs did we did we run? Was there was there a marketing campaign or did we advertise differently to result in that increase or decrease? Um, so that's just a bit of an idea of what we can do in that space. Uh, and then and then the last point there is is how do we promote not just in, in the current environment, which is obviously you know a lot of remote learning and it's and it's very difficult to get in schools but also when it's business as usual um, we've got some great marketing collateral and tools for you to utilize as a club um, to, to promote your programs and, and spread spread the word out there uh, next slide yep brilliant so as i said there guys um, th this this slide here is a bit of an example of how we use school data um, to, to sort of build build marketing plans and, and make decisions on on what we're sort of doing. So as you can see there, we've got school data. So so the number here where it says number of participants, that lists the number of participants at that school that have participated in a Cricket Blast program at a club. So it's showing that school to club transition there. Um, so, so we've got the numbers there of the last two years. And then on the far right column, we've got the year on year comparison. So, so what we've highlighted here is obviously the decrease. So we've got some schools there that um, have dropped off in, in from, from 2018, 2019 to 2019, 2020. So we can then go and look at those schools and find out, okay, did we run any different programs of the, of the school programs that Jake listed before? Did we do anything differently? Um, the, the marketing, the promotional stuff that we did at the school. Did we have a club um, um, promote in there in the previous year and they didn't promote again? Um, things like that. So it's it's not directly measuring uh, success, but but it, but it does give us a bit of an indication uh, of sort of trends that are developing in in that in that area. And then right. Jackie, I'll, yep. yeah, I'll take over here. Yep. Brilliant. Uh, this slide is just an example of how a, how a club can reach various schools within the community. Um, and it's, it's worth noting now that every club's going to be different. Your, your club may not um, pull from different, uh, different schools. It, may, it might just have sort of that one sort of feeder school, if you like. Um, and that's just obviously, and that's going to be something that you can work through with, your, with, a, with a local cricket staff, as I was mentioning before, but that might be just how your club operates. But this is just an example. Um, and I just wanted to show this, this data that you can see here is captured on play cricket when a participant registers to, to play at your club. Um, so the purpose of showing you this is just a, a reminder that of, of, of the multiple ways. So what you should be interested in is the, is the stuff over to the left that a new participant can find out about your club. Um, the word of mouth example that you can see there 
is often it might be Harry's dad is a life member at the club and some of Harry's mates, mates at school just want to play with him because he, he's playing at that club already. This one's harder to control at a, at a school and that's just sort of going to happen organically and naturally and that's just great for the club if they've got people like that around that are, that are naturally pulling people in. But what it's, I think what's worthwhile and important to note is just those other means that people can find out about your club. Uh, you can see Facebook mentioned a couple of times there and internet posters and flyers, um, school clinics there. So, so things that might be the club doing a school clinic, that might be a Cricket Victoria staff member doing a clinic. Um, so there's lots of different ways that a participant can find out about your club. And it's just worth noting my, my, the purpose of this is just to be always have, always be thinking it's not just that, that it's not just, there's, there's, there's different ways. It's not just um, not that streamlined way. There's there's lots of different ways that people can find out about your club. So it's it's great to have it's great to be all over these things. And as you can say, Facebook and those sort of club things and posters that you can put up. More of those you can get out there. Um, it's going to be a great tool for trying to recruit young kids to your club. All right. Um, yeah. Pass on to you for some marketing support now. Huh? Absolutely. Now I'm not sure if I've missed this, but did we ask if, if for people to put in the in the chat box any great ideas they've had or or any success stories they can pass on um, that they've had in in promoting um, their their club? Did we do that already, Jakey? Don't think I did, but I'd love to hear them through. Brilliant. Fantastic. So if we can get some feedback in the comments again, guys, and you've been really good so far. Um, I'm loving the feedback that's coming through. But yeah, any any success stories that you've had in in promoting through your club, um, and that's not just uh, limited to to school promotion either. Um, you know, there, there's quite a few other things you can do, such as um, you know community groups and and community pages, Facebook community pages, things like that. So we'd love to would love to see some suggestions come through um, from 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 all the people here. That would be great. Um, yes, so the marketing support. So uh, this was the last dot, dot point that we were going to touch on. Um, we are, de well, we, we're partnering with a new marketing portal called Scoop. Um, and so what this is going to do, and, and we do apologise that it's not live yet, it will be released within the next week or so. But this is going to be housed on the Community Cricket website. And essentially what you can do here is we are going to um, have, have on this site all of the marketing collateral um, that, that we have at Cricket Victoria. So not just Cricket Blast specific, but, but you've got junior cricket, um, junior girls cricket, senior cricket, social cricket, um, all, all the various things that, that we have available um, in terms of cricket programs. All of that collateral will be online on this marketing portal. As a club, you can log in using your My Cricket ID and then through the page, you can, you can look at what collateral you'd like to use, click on what you'd like to use, and then it's got a little editable section somewhere on the flyer where you can punch in your, your details of your program or, or specifically what you're trying to promote. So it might be um, some sort of um, come and try day or whatever it might be. It doesn't necessarily have to be your specific program. You can put those details in there. Um, click how many you want to print, um, and then and then you will be invoiced uh, as as the club directly, and the print it'll go straight to print, um, and it'll be sent directly to your club. Um, so there's a, bit, a a few different ways you can pay as well. So it can be credit card or or you can request an invoice. So essentially, what that's going to do is it's, it's really going to streamline that process and and probably take the middleman, which has previously been. Um, you know, Cricket Victoria staff out of the equation um, and you as clubs can go and create your own marketing collateral um, and start spreading that out to the community. So a really good tool there. And again, we'll, we'll provide some, um, some, some communication on when that will be live, but, but that should be in the next week or so, um, which, which will be really exciting. Yeah. How did we go with the suggestions in the in the chat box there, LRM? Did we have some good stuff come through? Yeah, plenty of plenty of great comments. Um, a lot of success using community Facebook um, pages, so connecting in with those. Um, we've got um, connecting in with other other sports, football and netball, uh, or football different various football codes and netball. Um, and yeah, just just trying to get parents involved. So um, 
taking them along for the ride. Yep. Awesome. Um, yeah, but plenty, plenty of really great suggestions coming through. It's really good to see. Really good stuff. Uh, the, the last thing, and, and you just um, jogged my memory there with the Facebook stuff, Al, is on that marketing portal, what we'll also have is not just um, not just marketing collateral uh, as in flyers for you to print and, and hand out or, or put in school newsletters, but there will be a, a, a range of social media templates that you can just um, you can just click on, download straight onto your computer. Again, you can edit your, your club information on there, and then you can chuck that straight onto your social media pages, whether you've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever it is, um, just download it straight from that portal and put it onto your, your social media pages. So again, another great way to, to promote, um, and, and especially considering the situation we're in where you know, face-to-face -face promotions such as school clinics and, and school gate drop-offs and, and things like that are out of the equation at the moment. Um, social media is, is becoming even more so important. Um, you know, not that it wasn't already, um, but yeah, another 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 aspect there that you can use on that portal. Thank you. Perfect. All right, we'll wrap things up with just some extra resources for you now. So our Cricket Blast help desk are going to be there um, again. So 1-800-CRICKET um, are going to be there to help with any, anything that you, um, that any issues you might have with your program. Um, our Cricket Victoria webinars and this club development series, it's been it's been ongoing for the for the past month or so. Um, the best thing about these are they're, they're being recorded and they're all housed at uh, at that address there. So we'll make sure um, you, can, you can find them by just by Google searching Cricket Victoria webinars if you if you can't grab that link either. Um, our community cricket website as well. That's got some great resources for Cricket Blast. And as we mentioned earlier on, our local staff. Um, and if you're wondering where they're going to differ from where you are in Victoria, we've got people signing in and, and viewing this from all over Victoria tonight. So, for example, Peter up in Wodonga, I would be his local staff member. But then you can find find who your local staff member are on that Cricket Victoria website as well. All right, so I think that's it. Um, we'll see if there's any questions just before I sort of finalise things. If anyone's got any questions now, just whack them in the chat box so we can use the, uh, the raise your hand function. Some great suggestions coming through um, regarding regarding promoting your club, um, which is really good to see, and and I strongly encourage um, you all to 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 look in the comments section there because there's some really good stuff being shared. So, um, yeah, your participation in this has been unreal, and and I think um, I think Peter might be a busy man. He sounds like he's uh he's he's got a few people requesting his services now. So. Thanks to you, Peter, as well for being on the front foot there, and um, yes. all the best, all the best to getting started in your in your return to training. Yeah, perfect. Okay, if there's no questions coming in, they might they might float through because I'm going to hand back to Emma in a moment. But yeah, I just wanted to just wanted to sort of finish by saying we've had a we've had a really overwhelming um, response to clubs and associations turning uh, tuning into these webinars. Um, and sort of consuming the plan that's only just been released. We had a heap of people um, give up their Saturday morning just to just to listen to Paul Milo, who's been doing a, a real power of work on this COVID return to play. And 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 all of the webinars that have been released have been great. We've had it. We've had great attendance. So um, that's a real positive in in my opinion. That means, as, as Emma alluded to at the very beginning of this webinar, that. But if people are asking us questions, it means we're busy, and it, um, which which is great. People are thinking about cricket, and we're trying to provide an opportunity for our um, for the participants within our club. So um, it's certainly not a negative at all. That um, just how much how overwhelming it's been the response to some of these webinars, which has been which has been really great. So hopefully we've been able to provide some clarity on uh, on the return to blast checklist, and uh, and we also hope that you've got a better understanding of our school strategy. Um, and picked up some tips on how to promote your club, um, especially in a, in a school. But and as, as Peter's been providing us some tips too, it seems like on social media as well. So hopefully we've been able to clear up that thing. Um, and and a, a, just a really sincere thank you from uh, from both Owen and I for viewing this webinar tonight. So I'll um, I'll pass it back to Emma now to wrap things up. We've we've um we just before you go in, we've actually got a few questions that have come in now. So I might really? just answer those. Um, firstly, to Steve there, um, we've got a school over the fence. Thoughts on running a, a junior blast program out of the school instead of at the club? 
in the, in the current situation, and this is probably something that we haven't touched on, um, so something for us to add into this presentation, Jake. At the moment, the advice from um, the, the government is that school ovals uh, are prohibited for, for use of um, cricket programs and external programs, I suppose. So um, a great suggestion, Steve, and normally running, running a cricket blast program at a school as an after school program would be a great idea and a, and a great way um, to, to get kids transitioning to your club. But at the current point in time, um, with the restrictions that are in place, that's unfortunately um, unavailable for us. Yeah, that, that's sorry. Just um, wait, just before we get to that next question, that's that's obviously something that we're really hoping is going to change. That's going to be pretty detrimental to the cricket season. There's a number of cricket grounds that are um, that also that are on school grounds and that sort of thing as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's something that we're certainly hoping is going to change pretty soon. Absolutely. Um, the David there start date suggestion I may have missed it yep so for regional areas David um, and, and look for, for Metro as well if you're looking at a pre-Christmas start date we are suggesting uh, the 21st of November which is a Saturday that that week run your first session and that will give you four weeks prior to Christmas I think that runs up until around the 13th of December um something around there so that, that'll give you four weeks pre-christmas and then depending on the length of your program david um you, you can you can finish it off post christmas um whether it's whether it's a, a 10 week program so you do four weeks pre or six weeks post um so so that's what we're suggesting at, at the moment um a few questions coming through now. Uh, we usually run from Ash. We usually run our Junior Blaster program alongside our under 11 games on Saturday mornings, assuming this won't be possible. Yeah, you are you are right, Ash. So that that will unfortunately be. Um, yeah, you won't be able to do that at this stage. Um, having having multiple kids on the, on the ground at the same time, um, we will need to at this stage run our Cricket Blast programs at separate times to junior cricket, which again, I know a lot of programs are set up that way. Um, so, so as Jake said, and we've said the whole way through, we're hoping that, you know, the longer this goes on and, and, and the more cases go down, things will start to ease and we can start to get back to a little bit of normality. Um, is there, a, from, from Jan, is there a list of what items and quantities should be in the Junior and Master Blaster Club packs? Great question, Jan. Um, so through the online shop and when you uh, initially sign up as a Junior Blast program for your first year, you will receive a Junior Blast pack uh, that, that has enough equipment for 32 kids. Um, so that pack is available online in the online shop um, that you can purchase with credits um, that you get every time you have a, a participant registered to your program. Details on, on how that all works um, is in the is in the video that Jake and I created that, that we mentioned earlier at the, at the very start. So suggest that you watch um, that video, which will, will give you all the tips on, on equipment and how to purchase. Um, so in terms of the quantities, yeah, that there is a pack there for 32 kids. So depending on how many on how many kids you've got in your program, Jan, um, hopefully that that pack is a bit of a guide for, for how much you will need. Ooh. I don't know if you can see the questions, Jakey, or not, but I'll keep going if you can't. Can't, sorry, mate. No. no that's all good. I'll just fire away. I'm I'm enjoying the sound of my own voice. <laughs> Recommend Monday evenings are very popular. Yep, great call, Peter. Again, providing some great information. If we uh, from Tom, if we run our Woolworths Cricket Blast sessions on a Tuesday night prior to seniors training to get senior helpers to help, are there COVID restrictions that would prohibit those helpers moving from Woolworths Cricket Blast group, groups into the senior training group? That is a fantastic question. So essentially you're getting senior players to assist at the Cricket Blast program and then getting them to move over to senior training once the Cricket Blast program finishes. That's an excellent suggest, uh, question. And to be honest, I'm not 100% across what the protocols would be. Um, 
my my thoughts and and Jason and feel free to jump in if if you if you know any more and you're nodding so I might I might hand it over to you if you know or not. Oh, I was just going to say I don't think there's a hard and fast rule it would no. be very hard especially in the case where there might be a parent for example who helps set the worst crew bus and then goes to senior training themselves um yeah. I guess what I would say is that a couple of things that to keep in mind with that one how many how how much we're limited to how many volunteers can help with cricket blast anyway um, and then secondly absolutely we're recommending minimizing crossover as much as possible so if you read through our uh, return to play guidelines from a senior cricket perspective it's a lot about having the same groups of 10 and those groups not crossing over to to prevent that crossover so Minimise it if you can, but also understanding that practically it might not be possible. So it's just another case of do the best that you can, minimise as much as you can, but in some instances it just won't be able to be avoided. So not a clear answer, but hopefully it gives you a bit of an idea. Yeah, awesome. Really, really good stuff, Em. And yeah, as we've said throughout, we'll continue to provide updated information once, once things become a bit more clear. Um, but yeah, a really good question, Tom. And hopefully, we've, we've um, without sort of providing you a definitive answer, we've, we've given you some support there. Um, and we have old kits, so I just need to know what I may need to replant. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So, so Jan, with that, um, if obviously it would be um, you'd be across how, how much equipment you have in your old kits. Um, depending on how many kids register for your program this season, Jan, you will receive uh, $5 for every participant that registers. Um, so, for instance, if you have 30 kids register, you will you will receive $150 um, of credit for the online store, which which you can purchase equipment, um, top up equipment for. So, obviously, from from what we've said, things like cricket bats might might be really important to purchase to make sure that that you have enough um, to supply for those kids that that don't bring their own, and then and then probably balls as well would be that would be the two uh, the two main main pieces of equipment that, that we would suggest for for purchasing right now. What uh, from from Louisa? What are the volunteer numbers allowed? So. Great question, Louisa. And and as M said before, there talking cricket blast specific, there's no real hard and fast rule at the moment on on the exact number that's allowed. Um, what we will be suggesting at the moment, obviously with uh, being two groups of 10, we will suggest that there's one volunteer or at least one volunteer per group, um, which which should be able to cover. There, there are there are rules that state that um, parents can supervise their children, so parents can sort of stand to the side and supervise or or support if they need to. They'll just need to abide by the social distancing rules and ensure ensure they're wearing a mask at all times um, and and things like that. So um, yeah, in terms of the volunteers, there's there's no real hard and fast rule, but um, you, you can you can sort of still still utilise parents as as that support mechanism. Hopefully that answers the question. Thanks, Jason. Here, it's probably one. Yes. You want one coach per ten, and parent help when you can with their masks, yep. social yep. distancing. That that's the key. Yep, absolutely. Um, and and the key as well is is communicating prior to your program. Um, so letting parents know that you know you might uh, you might need them for for some extra support as opposed to. To waiting until they come on the day and then and then having a discussion with them, try and minimise that as much as you can. So if you can communicate via the app prior to, um, so they're they're aware prior to the session starting that they're going to be needed to support in the program. Um, that's definitely a recommendation. Yeah. Um, Tim has said our junior blast is on a Friday. We have a game on the oval, but. But are we allowed to have the blast program on the far net at the back of the oval, as long as there are no mixing of kids? To that one, Tim and and Jace and M, you might have the updated information on on what is allowed in cricket nets in terms of numbers. If you guys do jump in, if not, I'll I'll continue on. Um, 
Um, so that, well, typically for training, so it's yeah, 10 on either side of the oval and then 10 in the nets. So for a total of three groups for senior training. So if you've got nets that can accommodate a junior blast centre in a group of 10, um, then uh, yeah, I can't see why that that's that's has been seen as a as a third zone, if you like. Um, so yeah, if if it can accommodate a blast group, brilliant. Fantastic. Um, so you mentioned that Cindy. So it's each coach plus 10, 11 per group. Yeah. So absolutely. So when we were saying sorry, um, two groups of 10, uh, we were with the 10. We were referring to 10 participants so that wasn't including uh the volunteers that, that will be helping so if it was a group of 10 and you had two helpers absolutely you're allowed to have the the 12 over there and then similar for a master blast game if you've got your 12 participants um so two two teams of six and then you might have a parent umpiring and a second parent assisting in the the kids that are waiting to bat um so so absolutely yeah that, that that hopefully answers that one for you, Cindy. Thanks, Owen. I'm just conscious that we've ticked yeah. over the 8.30 mark yeah. and um, keen to just take a couple more minutes of your time um, just from a southeast area perspective. Um, and thanks, Jake. So uh, recognising that uh, southeast area are hosting tonight, so hopefully we've got lots of southeast clubs on board, but we I know we do have people from all over. So Jake alluded to your local cricket people and uh, here's uh, just to familiarise um, and put names to faces. You can see them up on the screen at the moment. Again, you can find contact details for everyone on the Cricket Victoria website, which I believe is on the next slide, uh, Jake. Okay. Perfect. Um, so uh, Jake did and Owen did put up some key resources before and, and we've probably reiterated a couple here, but from a southeast perspective, um, really keen to communicate in terms well to communicate how we're communicating with clubs and, and there's three main areas that you'll you'll hear from us one is through your association we'll be feeding information consi consistently to your associations the second one is through the club and association newsletter this newsletter gets automatically sent to the primary user of your club's my cricket account but other people can sign up at cricketvictoria.com.au so we encourage you to do that that's stuff like um, grants, uh, training opportunities, these webinars, all of that gets sent through the Club and Association newsletter, which I believe is fortnightly. And the other place you can get um, up-to-date information is at our region Facebook pages. So uh, you can do a quick search for them, uh, Cricket Victoria Southeast Bayside, Cricket Victoria Gippsland, Cricket Victoria Southeast Country and Cricket Victoria Southern Metro, depending on what region you're from. Um, the guys mentioned community.cricket.com.au and my cricket support. For those of you that may have had poor experiences with the my cricket help desk last year, please be reassured that there are more staff who are better trained this year. So we're confident that it will be able to to meet the needs better than um, what it did last year. So um, stay with us on that one. Um, I think that's it. Is it Jake? Yep. It's all for us. Yep. Yeah. Thanks so, so much. Yeah, again, thanks everyone so much for your time. I really appreciate that there's a, a lot to take in, a lot of information, and this season's going to look very different, but we're just really grateful that we're able to even contemplate playing cricket, um, and, and we really, uh, really ask that if you do need any support or if there's anything that we're missing, please let us know um, because we're here to help you, um, and if and we can only do that if we know what you need. So please stay in touch. Um, again, thanks very much, and thanks for bearing with us a little bit over time tonight. So. Um, and, and thanks very much to Jake and Owen for, for a great session. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. No worries, Kate. Thank you.